Hello, uh, Calculus 12 students. Uh, welcome to Chapter 5, Lesson Number 2. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about something called the uh, first derivative test, highlighted in yellow. And uh, from our previous lessons, we've been talking a lot about critical numbers and critical points. And although it's not so hard to find these critical numbers and critical points, sometimes we don't know if those critical points um, you know, we don't know if they're maximum or minimum points. So one way to figure out whether we have a maximum or a minimum value is by using the first derivative test. Okay, so basically the first derivative test will help determine uh, whether, will help determine um, the max or the minimum value um, once we have a critical number. Okay, so um, like I said, if we can find the critical number, sometimes we don't know if we have a maximum or a minimum value, so the first derivative test will help us find that out. Okay. Now, if I look at the, the notes here, uh, let's read the notes here. Um, so if we have a continuous function with a critical point at x equals to c, then we can have three different situations. Um, if f prime of x, that means the slope, if the slope changes for sine from positive to negative at, at x equals to c, then we have a relative maximum at x equals to c. And uh, if the slope uh, changes from negative to positive at x equals to c, then that means we have a relative minimum at x equals to c. And finally, if the slope, f prime of x, if that um, does not change at x equals to c, then we don't have a relative extrema at x equals to c. So when we see the word extrema here, that means uh, max or min. Okay. All right, so that's the first derivative test. Now let's just go to back to my uh, four diagrams at the beginning of this lesson here. Um, if I look at my first parabola right here, uh, you'll notice at this point right here, um, I know that my derivative at x equals to c is going to be zero here. So this right here is my critical um, critical number, and um, this part highlighted in blue, that blue dot means that's my critical point. So you'll notice that on the left hand side of my critical point, the, the slope here is going to be positive, right? And if you look at the left hand, sorry, if you look at the right hand side, which is highlighted in blue here, uh, the slopes there are negative. Okay, so you'll notice that uh, my slope changes from positive to negative at my critical point there. So that means I have a relative minimum point here. So this represents a relative minimum. Sorry, relative, sorry, a relative maximum. Sorry about that. Okay, and that's the first derivative test, all right? That's just indicating uh, this very first. Uh, statement right there. So if I change from positive to negative at x equals to c, then I have a relative maximum at x equals to c. Alright, so over here, my um, next example here, at this point right here, this is a critical point, this means f prime of c, uh, it's not equal to zero, but it's actually undefined here. Alright, so critical points, they can be zero or undefined. And if I look at the left hand side, uh, this derivative here is positive, so f prime is greater than zero, but on the uh, right hand side my derivative here is negative all right so uh, if this is my critical uh, point right here um, c um, if i'm going from positive to negative that means i'm dealing with a relative maximum point okay and that's all the first derivative test is all right it's just evaluating the left and right hand sides of your critical point and seeing whether you change signs Okay, and finally let's do well, one minimum value here. So here I have uh, f prime of c uh, equals to zero because my slope there equals to zero. Here's my critical point c. And if I look at the left hand side of that critical point, you'll notice that we're dealing with uh, a negative slope. And if I look at the right hand side, I see that I'm dealing with a positive slope. So if I change from negative, if I change from this negative to that positive at a critical point, that means I have a relative minimum value. Okay, and that's all, that's pretty much the first derivative test. Okay, so let's go ahead and now apply this to a few uh, problems now. So uh, let's just go underneath here, and I do have uh, some problems here. Uh, for this very first example, I have f of x equals to 3x to the power of 5 over 3 minus 15x to the power of 2 thirds. And the question is, we want to find all relative extreme values. So extreme values, that just means find the max find you know show that we have a max or minimum values now one more thing I want to note is um, 
my graph here i do give you i do give you a picture of the graph here but the graph actually came out wrong we actually have a little bit extra uh, we actually just have a little bit more uh part of the graph over here that part just didn't come out properly so can you just please add that extra black line there okay now without using any calculus um if i look at my picture of my graph i know that i have a that, that looks like a minimum value there because my critical point has a slope of zero there and it looks like I have a maximum right here at the origin. Okay, so um, it looks like I do I do have two extremas there, one minimum and one maximum. All right, so I can verify that by looking at the picture. But what we need to do is, let's say we don't have the picture, then how can we um, verify this? All right, so let's just pretend that this picture is not here anymore, and let's just um, use some algebra now and verify that we do have a maximum and a minimum value by using the first derivative test. Okay, so in order to find a critical point, you know, uh, the critical point is important, right? So if you look at the theorem here, uh, we need to have a critical point at x equals to c. If I want to find a critical point, I need to take its derivative and set it equal to zero. Now, taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero is not a hard concept, but the hard part about these problems is um, simplifying the algebra. Okay, so uh, let's just be very careful with our algebra here. So let's take the derivative here, f prime of x. So this is using the power rule. So the three just stays there. And then the 5 thirds comes down, x to the power of 5 over 3 minus 1. Now this 1 right here, since I'm dealing with a fraction on the numerator, I'm going to change that 1 and I'm going to change this to a uh, minus 3 over 3. Because 3 over 3 is the same thing as 1, right? But it's much easier to simplify if you have a, a fraction with, a, with the same common denominator. Alright, so minus 15. And then I, I need to bring the 2 thirds in front x to the power of 2 thirds minus 1 again but remember uh, 1 let's just rewrite that as 3 over 3 that way we have the same common denominators right so once we have the same common denominators it's much easier to simplify okay so going ahead and, and simplifying my expression now you do want to simplify this uh, I have a 3 here and a 3 there highlighted in blue so this will be 5x to the power of 2 thirds uh, minus this is going to be uh, 10x to the power of negative one third. Okay, so hopefully that's not too bad because this 15 and that 2, that's 30. 30 divided by 3 is going to be 10. And 2 thirds minus 3 thirds is negative one third. Okay, so now that I've taken my derivative, uh, what I want to do next is I want to take my derivative and set it equal to 0. Okay, so let's take my derivative now and set it equal to 0. Now, when you're taking your derivative and set it equal to 0, you want to make sure that you factor things properly. And if you have something in a factor form, uh, it's really easy to find uh, the values of x where you are equal to 0. Now, if I look at my uh, step here, I have a 5 and a 10 there. Let's go ahead and factor out the 5. And then I have this x to the power of 2 thirds and this x to the power of negative 1 third. Now, since, they, since you both have the variable x, what you want to do is you want to factor out the variable with the lowest power. So the variable with the lowest power is x to the power of negative 1 third. So if you factor that out, if you factor that out out of this thing, what's left over? Well, you're left with x minus 2. Okay. Now, one question that you might get is, well, how did you get this x here? Okay, well, how do you get that x here? Well, you take this guy right here, which is 5x to the power of 2 thirds. And what you want to do is you want to divide that by um, this whole expression right here, which is 5x to the power of negative 1 third, right? That's what you're doing algebraically. So when you do this, you'll notice that the 5s just cancel. And this is going to be x to the 2 thirds minus negative 1 third, right? So when you have the same, when you have the same base, when the bases are the same, and if you're dividing, you want to subtract the exponents. And this will give you a value of x to the power of 3 over 3, which is just x. And that's how I get that x value right there. Okay, so that's a side note. Let me go ahead and delete all this now. Okay, now if I set this equal to 0, um, you'll notice that um, my, my critical numbers will be x equals to 0 and 2. Okay. So this expression right here gives you that value there. And if I take this x and set that equal to 0, I just get x equals to 0. Okay, so now that I found my critical numbers, sorry, this um, these are my critical numbers. 
once I found that, what I want to do next is I want to draw a number line and you know put these critical numbers on number line 0 and 2 and this and this number line re represents f prime of x and what you want to do now is you want to find values uh, between these regions in these in these regions one in yellow one in blue and let's see one in green so find numbers in those regions and compare that to um, your first derivative and see whether those intervals are positive or negative now if i pick a, a number in my yellow interval like over here maybe like um maybe 100 if i plug in 100 back into my um my derivative here that's equal to zero here uh you'll notice that i'll get a positive value so this is going to be positive all right let me just delete that and uh if i take a value from my blue region between zero and one i think the value one would be very safe. If I take that one and plug that back into here, uh, you'll notice that I do get a negative value. So that'll be a negative. And if I pick a number in my final region in that green part, which is gonna be maybe negative 100, if I take negative 100 and plug it back over here, I gotta be careful here. So if I plug in negative 100, uh, this yellow part right here, that will be negative. But if I plug in negative 100 into this part right here, uh, I get a negative value, so that means this whole section has to be positive. All right, so you want to plug those numbers, those test points into your derivative very carefully and value what you have. Okay, so it looks like, um, let me just uh, delete this part right now, these critical numbers here. Uh, it looks like from, um, I'm positive here, and then I'm negative there, and then I'm positive again. Okay, so according to the uh, first derivative test, that means I have a relative, um, I have a relative, it looks like I have a maximum right here. So I have a relative max at x equals to zero, and I have a relative, it looks like I have a minimum value here, because uh, you go from negative to positive, so I have a relative minimum at x equals to two. All right, so I can verify that using the first derivative test. And that's it, we're done for that question. Let me just go back to my original graph right here, right? So um, it looks like, yeah, this point right here is gonna be two, and this point is gonna be zero. So yeah, we do have a maximum and minimum points at those values. All right, great. Uh, so that's using the first derivative test. Let's move on to the second example here. And for my second example, I need some space, so I'm just gonna delete all this now. Okay, so uh, for my second question here, it looks like I have a, a rational expression there, and if I graph my rational expression, uh, it looks like I have a, a maximum there, and I have a minimum there. So once again, if you have the picture of the graph, it's pretty easy to determine whether you have a maximum or minimum point. But um, you know, but let's just pretend we don't have the picture now. So let me just delete this picture here. And if we don't have the picture here, um, how can we verify this using the first derivative test? How can we verify that we do have some extremas? All right, so uh, we take our derivative, so y prime. So since I have a rational level function here, um, that means I need to use a quotient rule. So this is gonna be the derivative of the numerator, which is negative two, times the, the denominator, which is x squared plus five, minus um, the numerator times the denominator, sorry, the derivative of the denominator, which is two x, all divided by the, dom the denominator squared. Let's go ahead and simplify this. This will be y prime. Uh, this will be negative 2x squared minus 10 plus 4x squared all over x squared plus 5 all squared. And then I can uh, definitely, if I highlight that part here, this part and this part, I can simplify that. So uh, I'm going to delete this now and uh, combine those terms. Uh, that's going to give me a value of uh, 2x squared. All right, so 2x squared minus 10. All right, so uh, that is my um, derivative there. And uh, once I've taken my derivative, I want to take my derivative and set that equal to zero, right? So once I take my derivative and set that equal to zero, I can find my critical numbers. And then once I have my critical numbers, I can find my critical points if I need to. Uh, but let's go ahead and set this equal to zero here. Now, if you look at this fraction here, all right, um, this has come up a few times. Uh, you'll notice that the denominator here, that will never be zero, right? 
because uh, since you have some, since you have the the exponents there, the power of two, even if you have a negative number or the number zero, uh, the, the denominator will always be positive, right? So the so basically the denominator won't help us. Uh, what we need need to do is we need to focus on the numerator here. Uh, that's going to be uh, two x squared minus ten, right? If I if the numerator is equal to zero, that means I can find my critical numbers. So let's go ahead and uh, simplify this. This is two onto um, x squared uh, minus five. And um, once I have, um, no, sorry, you know what? Let me just, sorry, let me just delete this. If I set this equal to zero, I can bring the 10 over and I get two x squared. And then I can divide by two. That, so that will give me five equals to x squared. And if I take the square root, x will equal to plus or minus um, square root of five. Okay. Um, just one second, please. Yeah, so after uh, checking the math, it looks like plus or minus five, that does represent my critical numbers, All right? So once you have your critical numbers, what you wanna do next is you wanna draw a number line. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a number line here. And my critical numbers are negative root five and, sorry, this root five didn't come out very nicely here. So this is gonna be, let me just redraw this. Uh, it's negative root five and positive root five. And this represents f prime of x. Okay, now all we have to do now is we wanna find uh, numbers in these regions. So um, numbers greater than root five, numbers between negative root five and five, and numbers and numbers less than negative root five. Um, and we wanna find, we wanna find those fine test points and plug them back into my derivative, which is, um, which is pretty much this guy right here. Okay, that rational expression. Okay, okay so, um, if I take a look at this, um, if I look at the blue region, for example, if I take a test point of maybe uh, zero here, if I plug that back in there, um, I'll notice that that region will be negative. So this will be negative. And if I take a test point from my green region, like negative 1,000, um, that will give me a positive value if I plug that back into my derivative. And if I take a number from my yellow region, uh, that's also gonna give me a positive region as well. Okay, so notice that I go from you know positive to negative, and from negative to positive. So that means I have a max here and a minimum there. Okay, so so by the first derivative test, let me just write this out the long way. And you don't have to write this for every single question, but since it's my lesson, I'll go ahead and write this down. By the first derivative test. Um, so we uh, when x equals to negative root five, we have a relative relative max, and when and at x equals to root five, we have a relative minimum value. Okay, and if I go back to my graph here, let me just get rid of this uh, the red drawings here. Um, it looks like we do have this will be root five, and this will be negative root five. Yeah, so that does match the, the numbers that I did have. So at, at negative root five, I do have a max, and at root five, I have a min. Okay, so that's the first rib test. Uh, those are two examples that, um, you know, um, it's the algebra that really kills you there. So just be careful with your algebra, but that that's that pretty much finishes the, the first rib test. Uh, now let's move on to the extreme value theorem. Okay, so... Um, let me just uh, highlight some of the key concepts here, or some of the key words here. If a function is continuous, so remember continuous is like this, all right, I can draw it without lifting my pencil. And if we're on a closed interval, like a comma b, so a closed interval means that we're only focusing on certain parts of the graph, not the whole thing, so the domain will not be all real numbers, then the function must have both an absolute maximum value and an absolute minimum value on the interval a comma b. Okay, so uh, hopefully um, you can um, visualize that, and uh, indeed this will be true. Um, if you're dealing with a closed interval, then you and if your function is continuous on that closed interval, you must have a map absolute max and an absolute min. Okay, so let's uh, go to a visual diagram that kind of illustrates this. Um, here I have this parabola, 
and uh, it's on this interval one comma four. All right. So if uh, if the question tells you that you're on some kind of interval, that means you're, you know, you may be dealing with the extreme value theorem. So um, let's look at the value, this one value here, and sorry, this red one and this red four. Um, here's the value of one, and here's the value of four. Okay. So basically, what that means is um, if I just draw like a line straight down here. This is one. This is like this is called an endpoint. So your endpoints are four and one. So basically, um, if I'm bounded to this interval, this interval of, of one to four, that means I'm only focusing on this part of the graph. Okay, so that part in blue. So if you look at that part in blue, you'll notice that it is continuous. And if you're continuous and if you're bounded and, and if you're bounded, then you must have an absolute max and an absolute min. And that's absolutely true here, right? This is my absolute minimum value here. That's the lowest point of the graph. And if I look at my endpoint right here, this right here is my absolute max. Remember, absolute max and absolute min, they just indicate that they're the highest and lowest points on the graph. All right, So you don't necessarily have to have this maximum or minimum shape forming. Absolute max and absolute min, those just refer to the highest and lowest points of your graph. Okay, So since I'm bound in that region, yes, 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 I do have an absolute max and an absolute min. Okay. All right, so how will we show this algebraically? Okay, so if I want to show this algebraically without a picture, um, the very first thing I want to do is um, I want to find our critical numbers because our critical numbers will tell us whether I have a max or a min. All right, so I want to take my derivative and set that equal to zero. So y prime is going to be 2x minus 4. And uh, we need to take our derivative and set that equal to zero. If I set that equal to zero, let's go ahead and factor this. So 2 bracket x minus 2. And if I set that equal to zero, my critical number will be at x equals to two. Okay, so if I draw my number line with the critical number two here, this is f prime of x. If I look at numbers to the uh, right hand side of two, and if I plug them back into my derivative here, so if I, so if I take test points and plug them back into my derivative, uh, I'll notice that this will be positive. And on the left hand side, I'll have negative values. So all you have to do is take a number like zero and plug that into your derivative here. If I plug in zero, which is a, a number in that region, I do get a negative value. Okay. So by my so yeah so by my um my uh, first uh, derivative test, I know that I have a uh, a minimum value here, right? Because I go from negative to positive. Okay. Now, how do I know if that's the absolute min? Well, I don't know if that's the absolute min or not. So what I have to do now is I need to find the y values and um, the lowest y value will be my absolute min and the highest y value will be my absolute max. So now that I know that I have a, you know, there's a minimum at x equals to two, let's just see, um, sorry, by my first derivative test, I have a minimum at x equals two. Let's just see if that's my highest or lowest value. Well, how can I do that? Well, let's evaluate f of two, right? I want to find the y value. So I take f of two and I plug that back to my original function here. And if I do that, um, I will get a value of negative three. Sorry, I get a value of negative uh, three. All right, so how do I know if that's the lowest value in that interval? Well, all I have to do now is I need to check my endpoints. So going back to the original question, um, this part right here that I'm circling in, in blue here, my endpoints are one comma four. So uh, another way to kind of verify this is just evaluate your endpoints. So if I plug in, if I find f of one and plug that back to my original function, I get negative two, and also evaluate f of four. So when x equals to four, I have a value of one. Now, what you want to do now is look at these three values here. All right, which one's the lowest? All right, well, this one's the lowest right here. So this is my absolute minimum. And my absolute minimum is at the point 2 comma negative 3. And uh, this is my highest value. So this will be my absolute max. And that comes at a point 4 comma 1. All right. That's good. So um, if I go back to my graph here, um, 
earlier on I indicated that here's my absolute min and that has the value of 2 comma negative 3 okay and here's my absolute max here in this black dot and that has the coordinates of 4 comma 1 and there we go we're done all right let's move on to the next one here um, so consider this function I have uh, f of x equals to x times uh, the square root of 9 minus x squared on this interval 0 to 3 so uh, here is 0 and here's the then point 3 so I, I'm only interested in the blue part of the graph and the blue part is continuous it is bounded so you must have a absolute max which is right here and you must have an absolute sorry, absolute max and you also have an absolute min which is right here I'll, I'll just say a min a and m i n all right, so you have two absolute minimum values and one absolute max value. So I can definitely see that using a picture, but how will we do this algebraically? Well, all we have to do now is uh, we need to take our derivative. But before I take my derivative, let's just go ahead and rewrite this a different way. This is x, to, uh, this is x times um, 9 minus x squared to the power of 1 half. And then I take my derivative now, f prime of x. Um, this is going to equal to... Uh, I use the proc rule here, so this, this will be 9 minus x squared to the power of 1 half plus x times, using the power rule now, 1 half onto 9 minus x squared to the power of negative 1 half. Using the chain rule, is, which is negative 2x. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. This is f prime of x equals to the square root of 9 minus x squared plus, actually it's going to be minus, Okay, the reason why it's minus is because I have that minus sign there highlighted in um, yellow there. And then if I highlight these two twos in green, they cancel out. So I'm left with uh, negative x squared divided by the square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay. Now, what I want to do next is I want to set this equal to 0. So um, if I take, if I just kind of delete this f prime of x and set that equal to 0, uh, what I what well, basically what I have to do is I need to solve for x now. So I'll take this expression right here and move that to the other side. If I move that to the other side, I get x squared divided by the square root of nine minus x squared equals to the square root of nine minus x squared. Okay. All right. So now that I move that to the other side, I can do some crisscross. I can multiply this um, with. Uh, I can multiply those together, and if I do that, I get x squared equals to 9 minus x squared and then if I use some algebra now I get 2x squared equals to 9 divide each side by 2 and then if I take the square root of this square root of that and square root of that my critical numbers will be x equals to plus or minus 3 divided by root 2 okay so once I've done that I need to go ahead and make a number line now uh, maybe I can make my number line somewhere over here because my critical numbers are negative uh, 3 over root 2 and positive 3 over root 2 and this represents f prime of x okay all right so let me just kind of delete these arrow signs delete delete, delete that all right so if I pick a number in my yellow region here and if I pick maybe like a thousand uh, sorry if I pick a number like um, just slightly over that maybe like 2.5 and if I plug that back into my derivative there um, I do get a negative value a negative region if I pick a number in my blue region here now like maybe um, uh, like 1 and if I plug in 1 back into this thing I should get a, a positive value and anything to the left uh, like negative infinity I should get um, what do I get here? Do I get a uh, negative value? Yeah, negative value. Okay, so just by that, I do have. Okay, so there's my inter there, there's my intervals of increasing and decreasing. Um, sorry, those intervals represent where I increase and decrease, where, where my function is increasing and decreasing. So this is negative. That's positive, and this is negative. So based on my first derivative test, it looks like I have a max here and a minimum there. Okay. So I verified that I do have a maximum and a minimum value, but how do I know that um, it's going to be the, um, how do I know whether I have a, an absolute max or an absolute min? 
Okay, now when we're doing this problem, uh, another thing that I've kind of ignored is is that I'm only bounded between zero and three, right? So I'm bounded between zero and three. Um, and basically uh, this number line over here, um, this number line right here um, goes from, you know, negative root three divided by two to positive root three over two. So basically all I have to do right now is just focus on, um, I'm, only, I'm only focused on like this part of the graph. All right, that, that represents from zero to three roughly. Okay, so um, the only kind of values that I really need to test are f of 3 divided by root 2, and I also want to test my two endpoints. So my two endpoints are, these are my endpoints right here, here and here. So I want to evaluate, um, I'll just write this over here, f of uh, root 3, sorry, 3, ah, 3 over root 2, and I also want to evaluate f of 0 and f of 3 just to verify which are my lowest and highest points. Well, this is gonna be a zero and zero, and this is gonna be 4.5. So if I look at all these numbers here, uh, you'll notice that this is my highest number here, 4.5. So this is my absolute max, and it happens at the point three comma root two over four, sorry, three comma root two comma 4.5. And you'll notice that these two points are low, the lowest points. So this is my absolute minimum. And they happen at 0, 0 at the origin and 3, comma 0. And that's it. Those are my absolute max and my absolute minimum values. Great. Um, I just want to do one more example, and then we're almost done here. Um, sorry, the algebra on these questions, they do take a fair bit of time. But I feel confident that most of you guys can probably pull this off. Uh, final question here, uh, consider this function here, ln x over x on this interval 1 comma e. I want to find the absolute extrema. So I want to find the absolute uh, max or the absolute min and then where they occur. So that means we've got to find our answers in coordinate form. So we've got to find, we're gonna need, we need an x value and a y value as well. Okay, let's take a look at this interval 1 comma e. So 1 is right here and e is about 2 point something. So about here, this, this, sorry, not there. Um, let's say e is around here. Okay, so within this region right here in blue, I want to find all the maximum and minimum points. All right, so since I'm bounded by um, a region, we are guaranteed to have an absolute max and an absolute minimum value. All right, so step number one, uh, find the derivative, because once you find the derivative, we know it's critical numbers, and once we know the critical numbers, then we can you know, use the first derivative test to determine whether we have a max or a min. So here's my uh, derivative of f prime of x equals to, okay, so this part right here, it's a fraction, so you wanna use the quotient rule. So the derivative of the numerator is one over x times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is one all over x squared, okay? I simplify this. This part right here in red, that's gonna be one uh, minus ln x all over x squared, that's f prime of x. Okay, now what we need to do next is we need to take our derivative and set that equal to zero. Okay, so I'm gonna erase that and set this equal to zero. Uh, once I set this equal to zero, derivative equal to zero, I can find my critical numbers. All right, so whenever we have a fraction, we, we are only focused with when the numerator is equal to zero because that will, that will mean the whole expression is equal to zero. So if I, if I uh, just focus on that part right here, uh, this will be the same thing as ln x equals to one. I just bring that over there. All right, and then if I want to get rid of this ln x, uh, I need to raise it to the power of e, just like in one of the in-class assignments. So this is gonna be x equals to e. Okay, so it seems like x equals to e is one of my critical critical numbers here. So here is e here. And um, this is uh, f prime of x. So uh, this e right here in yellow is that e right there. Okay, so now I want to look at values to the left hand and the right hand side of e. Um, I'm just looking at this and do I have any other major critical points and I don't. So um, if I look at values to the um, right hand side of E and if I plug that back into my derivative 
uh, it actually looks like uh, this interval will be negative. So if I put like a thousand back into um, um, if I put a thousand back into that derivative, I should get a negative value. And if I take numbers uh, less than e, I will get um, a positive value here. So I'll be positive. So based on the first derivative test, that means that I'm going from positive to negative. So that means I have a maximum point at e. Now I don't know if that's the absolute max or not. So what I need to do now is I need to evaluate f of e. I also need to evaluate the endpoints so that my endpoints are one and e. Well, I won't write that anymore. So because uh, it turns out my critical point is the same thing as my boundary point. And if I plug these back into the original function, back into my original function here, um, this will give me a value of zero. So that means, um, and uh, if I plug in e, I get one over e. So this means, uh, this is my lowest number here. So this means this is my absolute minimum. And it happens at the point one comma zero. And uh, this one over e, that's my higher, higher value of the two numbers. So that means I have a absolute max. And it happens at the point e comma one over e. Okay, all right, so there you are. Uh, those are my maximum and minimum points. Okay, all right, so if I go back to my graph here, my original graph, uh, this point right here is your minimum, I guess, at, at a one comma zero. And I guess this will be my maximum point, which is at e comma one over e. Yeah, one over e, a very small height. Okay, so that concludes uh, lesson number two. Um, it did take uh, 36 minutes, which is a bit long. Uh, a lot of this stuff is uh, algebra, testing the left-hand side and the right-hand sides, and um, using the first derivative test. All right, we'll see you next time in class.